predictions and a little bit of everything. We're getting into the results right away. We got the first fight uh, that we have talked about. Amir Khan between the Prescott in the first round. Now, your thoughts on that? Very disappointing. I mean, especially for the UK fans who they thought this was going to be the next coming of Nas. Um, unfortunately, he had a setback. Will the kid be back? I'm pretty sure he'll be back. Um, I really believe that he needs to get a rematch with this kid. I don't know if this... You know, when you lose by a knockout right away, especially in the first round, it could be two things. It could be one, it could be a fluke, it could be a bad punch. Two, would, this, would Amir's mindset be into the fight or would he be afraid to trade it up with this guy who knocked him out? So that's going to be interesting to see where Amir goes from this point. So. I think the last thing Amir Khan wants right now is a rematch with that kid. Uh, that that was what fifty four seconds. Fifty four seconds. Fifty four seconds, and he was droggy the first time he went down. And he was knocked out really good the second time. Yeah, it was. Uh, all I can say is, I mean, we stated it before that his chin was questionable. Yeah. We said it, you know, he's been tagged a couple times. Look out for Mir Khan. We didn't want to say he was, you know, garbage. I'm not stating he's garbage still, but I, I don't, I still don't think he's championship material at one thirty five. Not with the with all the great fighters at that weight class right now, I don't think he has a chance with any of them, any of the top He fighters. hasn't fought top 10 yet, and he got dropped by somebody that's, who wasn't That's what 10. I'm saying. And that was our point when we were making the video. So, I mean, you know, I think, you know, it's a learning experience. Hopefully he learns from his mistakes, and he moves further with his career. All I say is that he, he's made enough money, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing he did make the it's money. It's a good thing he's already made his right. money. Uh, next fight, uh, depressing. Didn't get through, man. Juwan Guzman versus Nate Campbell. How depressing was that? Yeah, that was like, you know. I'm sorry. Talk, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't make weight. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what's was really sad is that we um, actually we saw the interview with Nate Campbell and he looked in completely in this like he he really wanted this fight. I mean, when we spoke to Nate Campbell, we interviewed him. He was ready for a fight in July. He was ready to fight Marquez in July. Now, now it's a setback for him. I mean, he's been training the whole time. He's in great shape. He's always in phenomenal shape. This kid is always in the gym. He's a gym rat. So, I mean, for any fighter, it's not that one Nate Campbell. He's already ready. But he was really anticipating a good fight in July. He didn't get in July. Here comes August. He was ready to do it in August. Nothing. And September comes around. And Guzman, how dare you be overweight? Now, that's all I can say. How dare he be overweight? I think any professional fighter who's coming up in weight, who's going to be there for the championship... Three of the four belts, okay, governing body belts. You knew was on set online, and I, you know I don't. Not only Guzman, but his trainers, okay. Your trainers let you down, my man. If it wasn't you, it was your trainers, and if it wasn't your trainers, it was you. You as a professional fighter should have known better, and that's all I want to say about that. I'm gonna have to agree with with, with knowledge. Uh, Joan Guzman knew what he was getting into this fight. He had two two and a half months to train, just like Nate Plenty Campbell, of time. Did, just like Nate Campbell did. Uh, he was coming up in weight, so why he could, he was overweight is beyond me when he could make it. I mean, he's saying, oh, it was hard. Now now that I'm older, it's harder to get down from 170 to 135. Well, if you know you're going to be fighting at 135, you don't need to be fluctuating to 170. That's the first thing. You know what I mean? If you look at Nate Campbell, Nate Campbell, he says he's, he walks around at about 140, 145. So if you're going to be a champ at, the, at a certain weight class, come on, man. All the greats, all I can say is all the greats in history stay in the gym. They're always in the gym. You can look at Bernard Hopkins, who's always on point with his weight. All these guys have never failed their weight. You know, and if they did, they go in and it's like, shed less than half a pound. And that's it. They well, happen to I mean, I mean well, they now, now, now what's going to hurt Guzman now is, now he's taking for a joke in the, in the boxing world. Anybody that, that wanted and thought he was going to do anything impressive ain't going to see it now because Nate Campbell sure as hell ain't going to fight him no more. I'm pretty sure I, I it's doubt a big any, risk for nothing. I doubt any champ right now at that weight class is going to want to fight him either because really, what what is it? You can get in there and the same thing happen again? So he just he just messed up his goals. You know, I think the sanctioning bodies need to fine him pretty severely just like they did. Um, who was it? Castillo. I, Castillo, same thing with Castillo. They find him severely, and that's what needs to happen to Guzman, so he learns his lesson, basically. Now, moving along, we've got uh, Marquez versus Casamayor. <laughs> Very uneventful in the first, like, several rounds. I mean, you know, I don't know if you guys saw the round by round. I wasn't available at the time, so my partner... He was, he was hollering at some honeys. He, he was a, you know, he came, he, he said, I called you, I called you. There's a PYT. Yeah, but anyway. He, he was in his own <laughs> world. 
regardless of the fact it was very uneventful, you know, and, and, it, and when it picked up, it picked up, and Marquez, I mean, he did what we yeah, thought was going to happen. When Marquez let his hands you know? go, exactly what we said was going to happen, happened. Guys, I'm like, you got knocked out. For all you guys that can't complain, oh, he's biased. He was losing the fight. Ah! Stop crying and moaning and being little bitches. That's what you are, little bitches. Complaining about some stupid fight. Look, he got his, he got knocked out. What, what does well, it matter? That's, that's, like us, that's like us keeping complaining about Cotto winning the fight. Fuck, he got knocked out. He was on his ass. Point blank. End of story. <laughs> yeah, okay. Moving to the next, Move one. next one. Vernon Ford versus Sergio Mora too. I don't know. Listen, Mora, Mora, you know, I, you know, I thought Mora was a good kid. He came in there, you know, when he did the uh, when he got that decision. Actually, it wasn't a decision; it was a split decision draw against that one fight fighter before the Vernon Forrest fight. You know, he said, "Oh, I wasn't myself." You know, and man, this is not the time to say I'm like myself. You, yeah, you beat Vernon Forrest the first time, but you got to follow through. You cannot say. Oh, I wasn't feeling myself. I wasn't Man, feeling myself. What the I hell is that? To make way. Blah 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 blah. Bro, every I, fight is your last fight. Put it that way. When you're fighting, this is a business of beating people down, getting hurt, possibly ending your career, and possibly dying. You gotta train difficult. And every fight that you're gonna come up, you gotta train like you're fighting a monster and a beast. And you didn't do it. And if you did, I don't know what happened. Well. More loss for y'all that don't know. <laughs> Juan Diaz versus Michael Cassidis. Another 12 round, just, I guess, I mean, it was a good fight. But to me, it was more of a, just, I mean, more of the regular. Just I was actually, punching. honestly, I was really surprised that Cassidis eye. I was no, I was surprised Cassidis didn't fight from the outside. Had he fought more from the outside, he probably would have turned the fight around and won. But he wanted to mix it what up. What do you think about Juan Diaz coming back from his loss? How did he look? He came back from his loss. I mean, he didn't look spectacular, but he didn't look garbage. the same old Juan Diaz that threw he, many The same punches. style that threw same many style. punches, that he was in his face. And, you know, because, I mean, when Michael Cassidy's in the beginning of the fight was fighting from the outside, he was ranging him, he was measuring him, having good. Once Juan Diaz got on the inside and started fighting his own fight, then that's when the tables turned. But, I mean, it, he didn't show anything super impressive in the fight with, with Michael Cassidy's. He did his fight. He, he did, did his, fight, he did his and fight. And he, he made Cassidy's fight his fight. That's it, why he lost. And, and that's the point. But against anybody else, like I, again, against, I think against Marquez or, or Nick Campbell, he goes down again. Well, we shall see. Hopefully, time will tell. And, hey, I, I wouldn't mind seeing a rematch between him and Nate again or Marquez and him. I mean, I think he's still up top. Top 10 he, no, definitely I mean, still top 10. You know, still top 5. He, he, he'll beat Amir Khan too, and he'll beat uh, Guzman too, if, it, if he ever wanted another little payday. <laughs> uh, moving on. Bradley uh, Bradley versus Edna Cherry. Uh, 12 round decision for, for Bradley. I thought Bradley fought beautifully. I think Cherry threw some big bombs at him, and he shook him off and fought his fight. He didn't let the, the, the pressure get to him. He just stayed calm and collective and knew that if he kept on fighting his fight, eventually it was going to come out. I think really right now at 140, Bradley's the man to beat. I, 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 almost, I can almost really say that and not, not worry. I mean, I'm sorry for you Hatton fans and I'm sorry for you Malinagy fans and I'm sorry for anybody else that's at 140 that you like. But I think right now Bradley's making a case for himself. He's definitely making a case for himself. Definitely beating Junior Witter. I mean, in an impressive fashion. And now with Edna Cherry on his belt, I know Cherry came up in weight from one thirty-five to one forty. But still, I mean, you're if you're a power puncher, most power punchers carry their punch anyways. Um, yeah. Oh, and he and he showed that he has a he punch because he did he did hurt Bradley on occasion. But I mean, like I said, he was able to weather the storm. He had pretty good defense. He had solid punches. He knocked down Cherry. I mean, I, I think he has the tools to really shine in the division. Definitely has the tools. Definitely in shape. There's no doubt. Oh about no, it. no the doubt man about is it. In shape at all points in time. So I mean, he's definitely one of the top champions in there. I, I would like to see him win with Hitman. I'd like to see him with Paulo Manaji. I would, because you know he could box and he could brawl. He could do a little he, bit of he everything. Does, he does. So, that's why I like him because he does it all. He does a little bit of he's all. He's a mix everything. of everything. So, you know, if he wants to mix it up with Hatton, he can mix it up with Hatton. If he wants to outbox Palomar, it'll be an interesting fight. So, you know what? Either way, I do like this kid, Bradley. So, I, I'm not going to say he's the greatest at 140, but I do, you know, I put him up there as one of the best. I, 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 I'm, almost, I'm almost convinced. I think one more fight in with a with a good, good solid fighter, opponent. solid opponent at 140 can definitely show everybody that he's probably the Top best best at 140. Okay. Uh, moving to the next one, we got Jorge Barrios versus Rocky Juarez. 
Wonky Wise with the KO in the 11th round. Yo, man, to me, it just... Talk about an ass whooping all fight long. Yo, all I can say is Rocky Warriors prayed for that punch to come in and cut that lip up. I, I, I just think, honestly, you know, I was watching that fight, and I'm trying to find out what the hell, what the hell were the, were the, the judges, judges watching? I mean, I could not see this because I was giving round after round of Barrios. I honestly, for once, I was actually agreeing with Lampley and, uh, uh, and Jim and, and all those guys, the whole HBO crew, I was actually agreeing with them. I was like, man, this guy, okay, they're on point this time. And then out of nowhere... <laughs> The damn judges, after the fight was over, Rocky Warriors. I was like, man, hometown decision. Can you say that at least? Can, can you give me a little bit of hit of hometown decision? Because yeah. that was disgusting. Barrios won that fight by scorecards, but he got his butt kicked. They didn't know that about it. Hey. That lip was disgusting. <laughs> Bro, I mean, it looked like a it piece of meat was handed up. Was gone. I was like, wow. That yeah. was disgusting. That was disgusting. Good points by uh, Rocky Warriors if that's what landed and that's what hit. Hey, well, Jorge Barrios didn't take away from him because he fought a hell of a fight. He got tired and he got cut up and banged up at the end, and that's what caused his downfall. But as far as beating the bricks off of Juarez, he was beating the bricks off of Juarez. He was out boxing them. Fight. He was punching them. I mean, he continuously kept landing. I would like to. I, I Though, I will say this Rocky Juarez, you know, he was measuring his punches and he was catching them from time to time. He just wasn't doing enough to win the rounds, in my opinion. I agree. Then, moving along, we're going to go into predictions of upcoming fights. We got Paul Williams versus Andy Cole at 160. At 160? You know, Paul Williams fought at 160 before. Most guys don't know about Paul Williams fighting at 160, then coming down. and You know, he's shooting back up. I guess he could test the waters, but, I mean, maybe, I, he, all can I can teach, say is, maybe he can teach Guzman how to fluctuate and win. Maybe. I mean, all I can say is Andy who? That's all I can really say. I don't know Andy. I don't. I mean... Andy Cole. Hey, well, uh, from what I read from Andy, because again, I haven't seen him fight either. Mm -hmm. But from what I read, Andy seems to be, uh, he says that he's not taking this fight to lose. He's going in there to swing and he's going out there And that's to what show. you need to do, Andy. To if you want to show the world that you can do this, that's how you need to approach this fight. Don't be afraid of the big man. But sometimes when you got a guy there with a heavyweight reach, now he's got a lot of weight on him, maybe... You know, for going down to 147 is the depletion but then, but of weight then, on. But then you got Andy Cole, it. who's fought at 160 his whole for career. Whole time. So, I mean, it could make for an interesting fight. I, I want to see. I, the winner should be Paul Williams. I mean, the Paul fight Williams. was definitely picked for Paul Williams and not for Andy Cole. Right. You know, Andy Cole didn't offer Paul Williams a fight. It was the other way around. So, it should be for Paul Williams. But, again, we're, go, we're happen, going at 160. Huh? So, I mean, that's two weight classes above what Paul Williams is used to getting hit with. We shall see. We shall see. Chris Ariola versus Carlos Garcia at heavyweight. Your thoughts on that? I want to see Ariola go out there and do what he says he's going to do. He, he's in the game of fighting. That's what he does. He likes to talk it. He's going to walk it. Chris Ariola, I'm going for you. Going for Chris Ariola by knockout. Uh, hopefully, he can get more polished and refined. More polished and refined. Uh, That's what you he know, control to himself a little more. But who doesn't like to see ruthless aggression? Who doesn't like to see a good ass? Good old fashioned ass whooping. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Definitely know that about it. So, Ariella, here you go. This is your show. Make it happen. Make it happen. Farah Arslan versus Guillermo Jones. You know, I was watching both these guys, and they're both in prime top physical shape. You know, and, and I want to say Farah. That's who I really want to say. That's who is, is in my head. But right I, wouldn't now. Be su I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets caught with something, though. But I'm going to say I'm gonna say Arslan in this fight. I went against him last time. He made me look foolish. <laughs> I'm gonna, so I'm, going for I'm, gonna have, yeah, I'm gonna have to go for Farat for the same reasons, but uh, I, I can't sleep on Guillermo. Uh, moving to the next fight, uh, one that everybody's talking about: Shane Mosley versus Ricardo Mayorga. This is a very interesting matchup. Shane Mosley, yeah, I mean he's you know he just a phenomenal fighter, always has been. And then you got this reckless abandonment fighter in my, in Ricardo Mayorga. You know, this fight to me the way I, the way I see it happening could go two ways. Ricardo Mayorga says what he does and knocks out Mosley in three, which I, I really highly see that not, not happening because Mosley's got a hell of a chin. I mean, he's been down only once in his career that I can recall right now, and that's with Vernon Forrest. And, I mean, he's always been solid fighter. Solid fighter. Um, but that is Ricardo Mayorga's best opportunity to win this fight. He has to do it early because he runs out of gas later on. And in the later rounds, I see Mosley taking over and winning this fight. I'm going to have to agree. Well, I think Ricardo Mayorga is extremely dangerous for the first three to four rounds against Mosley. He's lying. And, and for the simple fact that 
I don't know if most of you guys ever noticed, but Mosley fights at the pace of his challenger a mm -hmm. lot of times. He doesn't fight. He doesn't set the pace. Too. No, he doesn't. He doesn't set the pace. He lets the his opponent dictate the pace, and then he fights to that style. He did it against uh against Cotto. He's done it against uh Fernando it's Vargas. It's he it's done it anyway. against the whole, everybody. Everybody's He'll fight at their pace. Yeah. And not to say that it's a bad thing because I mean he's come out victorious and he he does his thing. But I'm saying if he goes in there and he fights at that pace of Mayorga where Mayorga wants to slug it out and he gets caught with one of those bombs, I mean it could be lights up for, for Mosley too. Uh he does have a good chin, but I mean you can ask Vernon Forrest if them punches hurt. You can ask uh well, I say this with speed. I'm gonna give it to Mayorga with speed. Uh, excuse me, not Mayorga. Mosley with speed, power. I want to say Mayorga because he's been at even heavier weight classes than Mosley, and Mosley has yet to knock out the guys from 147 up. He was phenomenal at 135, had 38 wins, 35 by knockout. But as he got into the heavier weight classes, I mean, who has he knocked out? Okay, Vargas. But Vargas to me was damaged goods when he came at 160 and 154. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't think Shane Mosley has shown that he has the power. So I'm going to give Mayorga the power edge. Skills-wise, i got to go with Mosley. All day long? All day long. I mean, Mayorga is just one of these guys who he's winging his punches. He could get caught. So, I mean, I'm just I'm trying to level this thing. And the playing field to me right now is going for Mosley. I'm going to have to agree. Yeah. I'm going for Mosley. I, I mean, if, if he goes in there and he sticks to his boxing, you know, a, a la De La Hoya, and he can do the same thing, if not worse, than what De La Hoya did to, to Mayorga. I but just again, hope that Mosley doesn't look for that one punch. You know, the great thing about Mosley from the back in the days was Mosley through combinations. His speed is what killed people. It wasn't so much his power. It was speed that killed. It was the punch that the people did not see coming at him knocked everybody out. And I think Mosley is depending on, he wants to show he's got a lot of power. But Mosley, you got to understand, it was your combination punching that knocked people out. And not so much your power. Because the power is going to be there. Don't worry about that. Just work on your combinations. Because he's been looking for one bombs every time. One punch. And it's always that overhand right. And they caught Cotto a lot of times, but it doesn't get it done. If you do combinations, I think you would defeat more opponents more decisively these times. So I'm looking for my for Mosley in this fight. I agree. Mm -hmm. Then the on. next fight, Andre Berto versus Steve Forbes. You know, I'm going to go with the young guy. I'm going to go with Andre Berto. I think Andre Berto needs to have a test, and he's going to get a boxing test this time. Because, you know, most people that know Steve Forbes, yeah, he did pretty good against... Well, actually, I won't say he did good against Forbes, but... but you know, he landed some punches on Hoya. He can hold his own with heavier guys, I think. I think, but he's a very skillful fighter. And I think he could slip punches and he could make he could make a very good fighter look amateurish. Let's just say that. So I think in this fight we're gonna see Berto's abilities to, to fight with an actual boxer. Now, Berto, I'm gonna give him the power edge. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna he's more powerful. He's very fast, he's lightning fast, and he's a very strong fighter. So this is gonna be a very good test to see how he does with boxers. But I got Berto on this fight. I got Berto on this one, too. Just because Steve Forbes let me down against the Hoya. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real. I like Steve Forbes. I like... Uh, don't care too much for Andre Berto yet, to be truthful. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm going to have to agree with Nas. I think if anybody can show Berto how green Berto is and how wet behind the ears he is, it's going to be Steve Forbes. He can definitely out outbox Berto if he really wanted to. If he goes in there with his game plan and sticks to it, he can outbox Andre Berto. Oh, yeah. He's, he's uh, a veteran of the don't, game. Yeah, don't that. get it twisted. He's been champ before, and he, he yeah. he's a veteran. He knows all the tricks of the trade. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely going to be a good fight for Andre Berto. If he's the champ and he remains champ, this is definitely a good test for him. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give Berto a slight edge over Steve Forbes just because of youth, but uh, Steve Forbes can definitely impress in this fight. Definitely. And then we're going to the news. News, we got Don King is coming up again. Don King all of a sudden is starting to sign people. He came and took Barrera away from Golden Boy. He came and he, he signed a deal with Oner in, uh, in Germany. And now he's got Gamboa and Odalani hey, Solis. All I can say is more power to Don King. I mean, if he's starting to pick up these young fighters again, it's good to see that. Not only fun. that, he's also getting the two Puerto Rican prospects, the Royal Twins. He's also talking to them and trying to sign them too. And if he does, that's a good thing. He needs new blood. I mean, you know. I'm going say. And he needs young blood that's in the lighter weights because a lot of his fighters are It's heavyweight. all heavyweights. And heavyweights, heavyweights that are heavy garbage you know? on top of that. Let's be honest. I mean. His best I heavyweight is, is, is freaking like the, the seven-foot dummy. Vel What's his name? Valoev. Hey, you put Valoev in there with any real contender and he's done. 
I mean, he's always got a puncher's chance. Ah, uh, bro, if he couldn't hurt, really, he could hurt John Ruiz. He didn't knock John Ruiz out or do anything with John Ruiz. He was bigger than him by like two feet. Ruiz got that style to make people look ugly, though. It's always gonna look ugly, no matter what fight John, Ruiz fight, hey, no matter hey, who he fight. I saw the fight. He was, John Ruiz was the one throwing punches. That's true. But you know, it's good to see that he's going into the lighter divisions now because, to me, that's where the action's at right now. Is the lightweight divisions and. Uh, you know, he's got Nate Campbell in his stable, so that's a, that's a good that's champion a already. And he's starting to get these young cats coming up, so he's already setting up for the future. And, you know, I just love seeing that. And it's good to, it's good to get him back in the mix because he put in a lot of stellar fights in his, his his entire career. I mean, you gotta you got to say Don Key. Yeah, no, no matter how player. you got, I mean, a lot of you guys like to hate on Don King. I've read all over the message boards, oh, Don King's a crook, Don King's a criminal. He's done this, he stole from Mike Tyson, he stole from this person, he gives from the that fans person, what they want. or from the other. But you got to remember, all these people got paid too. They didn't fight for free. They didn't go up there, they didn't have, Don King didn't have a gun to his head and say, you sign this fight. I mean, you got champs like... Uh, Felix Trinidad. Felix Trinidad made millions of millions. dollars off, with, off of Don King. And still, and, and still makes him. And has, Roy Jones is making You them. haven't heard one bad thing out of his mouth about Don King. Nah. And then, but then you got Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was making Mike more Tyson than anybody else at the time. was the highest paid boxer. Okay, now what he did with his funds, I mean, that's, that, you know, that's personal choice. He made poor choices, poor decisions, you know what I'm saying? But you can't blame so Don King. You can't blame Don King. And a lot of people And I'm sure he could have made more money, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Also in news, we've got Felix Trito Trinidad <laughs> saying that he's got two fights left in him in 09, one against La Jolla, one against Bernard. I say stay retired, good riddance, don't come back. Knowledge, what is your take well, This is that? where we actually <laughs> differ in opinion. I'll be honest, guys, out there, if you guys are looking at our show, um, I'm a Trinidad supporter, always have been, always will be. That That's my champion coming up in my generation. He loves Cotto, that's his champion, that's his generation. But... I'll be honest, man. I would love to see Tito mix it up with De La Hoya again because everybody wants to say De La Hoya beat him, De La Hoya beat him. But you know, in the record books, it says Tito. Man, you know, I'm tired of De La Hoya picking on small guys. So why not make a Tito De La Hoya fight? The only problem is what weight division are they gonna fight? That's the problem. I don't understand. Hoya doesn't want to go up 160. Tito don't want to go below 170. I don't think that fight will ever be made. Okay. Now Bernardo Hopkins and Tito fight. That'd be an interesting fight to me. I honestly like that fight. I think, Do I think Bernard I think, I think, him again? I think, I think Knowledge is mad because they stopped making Tito Punch. <laughs> I used to love drinking Tito Punch. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> But, you know, will Bernard Hopkins do the same thing and do a savage, brutal beating against Tito? You know, it could happen. Maybe not. We don't know. Honestly, I believe Bernard Hopkins. I've always said Bernard Hopkins probably beats Tito again in a rematch. But it, come, it goes for an interesting match. He looked pretty good against Roy Jones. I'm going to say it like this. Against Bernard, he gets knocked out. Against De La Hoya, De La Hoya runs. He might catch him in the end. Only if they fight at 160, 164 around there. If they fought anything well, other than that. He runs out of gas, though. That's what happened last time. And the, believe it or not, though, I'm going to put this out there. Because I do like Trinidad. He knows I like Trinidad. I like Cotto yeah, more, but Trinidad I did like. I think Trinidad, if, he were to, if you were to pair him against Pavlik, I think he'd knock out Pavlik. That's just me. Wow. That's just me. I'll put it out there. I don't care. Y'all can say whatever y'all want about it. And, I, and I'll say it again here. Bernard Hopkins is going to knock out Pavlik too. Yeah, I think Bernard Hopkins coming up. We're going to definitely discuss that fight as it comes up. But, um, you know, Bernard Hopkins is a very, it's, it's a very difficult style for Pavlik. And we'll talk more about that. Welcome to Con of the Day. Thank you for uh, watching the show. If you like what you see, you know what to do. Subscribe. Uh, anybody's got any questions, comments, concerns, hit us up. Knowledge, anything else I'm not forgetting? Pretty much it. Uh, folks, it's brought to you by BobBaseBoxing.com. Check them out. Uh, and those posters will be shipped out. Shortly. And that's it. Thank you for watching P4P Boxing. You forgot what you had to say. Boy, it came on the wrong side. <laughs> Maybe you get on this side. Go ahead. And this is pound for pound boxing. And this is pound for pound boxing. The voice of a new generation. When we pull back, no punches.